Sorry, Councillor Yusuf, uh, one could say that you have one leg in the Western world and one leg in the Muslim world. Um, tell me, what makes you different from what one could call average Muslims? Well, I think in that I'm from the West, I was born and raised in the West, I converted to Islam. And because I, I'm reasonably well versed in Western tradition, I studied at good schools and and then I went to the Muslim world and subsequently learned uh, the Islamic tradition. So I think I, I, I'm, I understand, for instance, in the current crises, I'm, I'm very aware of the Western sensibilities here and also of the Muslim sensibilities. You say that you understand the sensibility in the Western world? I think so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think one of the things that a lot of uh, Muslims are unaware of is that the, the right to freedom of speech in the West largely was won as a right to criticize religion and to criticize politicians. Mm -hmm. And so those are held sacred in, in the Western canon. Let me ask you then, yeah, I, I know that your visit here in Denmark these days are caused by the Muslim, uh, by the, the, the Muhammad cartoons. Uh, what is your own opinion on these cartoons? Well, my, my own opinion is I just find that people that are not sensitive in any way to religions, um, I think they do us all a, a grave disservice. I think it's very fair to criticize religion. I think it's very fair to examine it. But I think we're moving into a territory that's that's very dangerous when we begin So you to, don't find it fair to print these cartoons? I, I think that, I think as a, if I was an editor, I, I would really look at the broader implications. I don't think we should gratuitously print things uh, for some mm -hmm. sacred right to offend others. Mm -hmm. I, I really, I don't think it's conducive to civilization or to what uh, the British call the gentleman. You know, it's very important in the West, the idea of just being uh, a decent human being. But what is your opinion as a Muslim? As a Muslim, obviously I'm, I'm offended. I, but I would be offended if it was Jesus or Moses or Abraham. I would, to be honest with you, be offended uh, making fun of the Buddha. Because I, I genuinely believe in my heart of hearts, even before I was Muslim, mm -hmm. that I think we should be sensitive to other people's beliefs. Tonight you have been at a dialogue meeting in, in Copenhagen. How do you expect to contribute to a solution in, in, in this current crisis? Well, I think part of it is just opening up dialogue. I think one of the things that's happened here that I can see is that it's been reduced to like a street brawl. That, that, that really uh, people are duking it out on the streets. And, and I just feel like we need to take it to a higher level. We need to encourage people on both sides. And I think, to, to, you know, to be fair to the Danish, I think it, it's completely wrong to attack uh, Denmark or the Danish people, to trample on the Danish flag, which I believe is prohibited in Islam mm -hmm. to do that. And if I was a Danish person, I would be deeply offended by seeing my national symbol trampled upon it, and I don't think there's... Do you mean that we should react on that? I think that there's, justifiably, there would be reasons to be angry about that. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, the reaction should be curtailed with this understanding of what's going to be conducive to the long term. In other words, how do we affect a type of change that's going to be enable us to live together? We're all sharing the same planet, and globalization has made us all interdependent. When you're talking here as a Muslim to me, uh, the question could be, who represents the Muslim world? Uh, but before asking you that question, I'll show you a clip with uh, another Muslim called uh, Anjim Chujari, and uh, recently he arranged a demonstration in Denmark against uh, Denmark in London. You have those people who call themselves so-called moderate Muslims, but you know you have to understand that this uh, classification of extremists and moderate was never something which uh, you know uh, came from the Sharia. It's something which has been presented by the West, presented by the media, in order to give some kind of uh, uh, credence and some kind of legitimacy to those people who are not really practicing Islam. The only distinction we have in Islam is between practicing and non-practicing. Now let me ask you, who represents the Muslim world? You or him? Well, I think normative Islam, mainstream Islam, I, I think my voice is much more uh, amplified in mainstream but why Islam. why do we always hear his voice? Well, and I, I, like his, I think like part his. of that is the media. I think the media tends to focus on extremist views. It makes for good copy. It's something, uh, what bleeds, leads. I mean, this is, this is partly the media amplifying these voices. I really believe that. And I think there's an immense responsibility. And that's why I think it's good that you allow other voices. It's very important. I think the Danish people, 
Um, you know, this country is, is really one of the finest countries in the world in terms of the, uh, the, the uprightness of the community. It has some of the lowest corruption indexes on, uh, on the planet. You know, so I think there's a lot of good in this country, and I think it's very tragic that uh, Denmark, that has no history of colonization, really, in, in, in the colonial period, um, was generally loved by, by the majority of people. And so I think it's very important that the Danish reach out. I mean, I really feel like they need to reach out as a community to not allow those bridges to be burnt. But should we stop interviewing persons like the one we just saw? Well, I, he, he's a voice, but it's, my, it's a minority voice. If you want to amplify that voice, in a time when I think the amplification of that voice is, is very dangerous because it, we need to, to work out how to live together and, and I think dialogue and I think listening to each other I mean I, I've seen uh, people like that interviewed that they don't allow the other person to talk I mean they cut people off they won't listen that voice is not a dialogical voice it's a, an authoritarian voice it's telling you this is this is the world this is Islam there's no other Islam my Islam allows for him to be a Muslim he's I don't see him as he's not a Muslim he's a Muslim and he is entitled to his opinion the irony is is that if he was in a Muslim country uh, people with those type of voices are often arrested so the fact that he's in Britain condemning Great Britain it's Britain that's enabling him to do that because, because there's freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, yes. absolutely. That's the point. Well, uh, I know that you uh, earlier you met with George Bush and uh, also with uh, Tony Blair. If you had the chance to advise the Danish Prime Minister, Mr. Anders Fogh Rasmussen, in this current uh, conflict, what should your advice be then? I think part of the advice is to really uh, enfranchise the Muslim community in Denmark. It's an important community, it's a small community, but they need they, they need to be enfranchised. They need to there needs to be reaching out. And I know that the government's doing it because I I've read about it, mm -hmm. but I think there needs to be more. And I think the economic interest that Denmark has in the Arab world, Arabs love Danish cheese. Mm -hmm. They they really do. And it's good cheese. Well, not really. They don't buy it. They're not buying it because they're upset. But we need to reduce the tension. We need to reach out. And I think the onus is always on on us. In other words, I really believe the Danish people should not be concerned about what the Muslims are doing. They should be concerned about what's the best response that we can make as human beings to a better world, to a world that has more uh, dialogue, a world that has more understanding and mutual respect. Hopefully the Prime Minister has watched this interview. Okay, well I hope so. Sorry, Hamza Yusuf, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you, and thanks for having me on. Right.